I want to make sure that my husband, Phil, can visit me in the hospital should I have to go back again, like when I had a triple bypass a few years ago. I want to make sure my husband has my earned benefits for retirement and Social Security. I want to make sure that my husband is taken care of just like your spouses are taken care of. If I was the entity on the other side of the aisle, I'd be more concerned when my own members accuse it of having cocaine-fueled orgies than worrying about the morality of my marriage. I yield back. People understandably get fired up over the issue of marriage equality, and Mark Pocan uh, is no exception. Yeah, if uh, if on your side of the aisle, members of your own caucus are talking about your drug fueled orgies, maybe get a lockdown on that situation before you try to stop uh, the LGBTQ plus community from having access to the same rights that other people have. Uh, thankfully, uh, Mark Pocan side won, and last night the House passed legislation that would repeal the Defense of Marriage Act and enshrine marriage equality into federal law. Notably, the House did that. We're not yet at the point where the Senate has taken it up, yet alone voted on it. We will return to that in a bit. I do want to talk though about the nature of the vote. It was 267 to 157, okay? Which means that most Republicans voted against it. Also, the only people who voted against it were Republicans, but I believe 47 House Republicans joined the Democrats, which as I mentioned, enshrines marriage equality. Also, by the way, codifies the right to interracial marriage. So to some of you Republicans, don't get any wise ideas. We got out in front of you on this one. But anyway, 47 Republicans joined the Democrats. And yeah, it's it's a minority of their party, Jessica. But you, know, you certainly wouldn't have expected that even just a few years ago. What do you think? I honestly would not have expected this a few years ago. The the far right in the United States has been emboldened and it's about a lot more than just marriage equality because these people have been elected by communities that are okay with them being completely against gay marriage. They they want to oppress people who are members of the LGBTQ plus community. And so sure, they're going to cast this vote against gay marriage, but of course, you know, it's it's going to pass anyway, regardless of how they voted. But it just signals as to what life is like for members of the LGBTQ communities in those districts that those representatives are coming from. It's a very hostile environment for them in the United States today. And it's terrifying that in 2022, we are fighting for the same rights that we have been fighting for for decades. It's yeah. insane. They're fighting, fighting again. Like we're used to continuing to struggle to achieve the same thing we've been struggling for. Like, you know, because we never had single payer healthcare or whatever. It's when you have to do it again that it almost hurts worse. Like, like knowing that you can legalize same sex marriage and then oh, they might be coming for that actually. In the same way with Roe v Wade or you could outlaw assault weapons and then oh God, they bring it back. And it's that double dipping, like some things shouldn't be rebooted and the destruction of people's rights, I think I would include in that. But yeah, 47, I wouldn't have expected a few years ago. I'm gonna be completely honest, I wouldn't have expected it right now. I am actually shocked that so many Republicans would do this, not only because you know the whole Republican thing, and they're awful. Um, but also, like, what have what has the right been campaigning on for the past year and a half? Like, sure, it's not all homophobia and transphobia. They've also had their whole CRT thing. There's a lot of racism in there, and there's quite a bit of misogyny. Let's be clear. But there's so much of a focus on the daily demonization of not just um, uh, segments of the LGBTQ plus community, but individuals from it. Like, libs of TikTok is the most popular thing on the right because they want an endless stream of third grade lesbian teachers that they can personally attack. And so with that as the backdrop, having several dozen Republicans being willing to vote for this is actually pretty surprising. But that said, we've been talking about the history of this. I wanna give people a bit of history because if you've started paying attention to politics in the last few years, you may not know how fast this has moved, even on the Democratic side. Just a decade ago, Joe Biden got castigated for announcing his support for gay marriage before Obama, who at that point was the sitting president, had done his own. Because we need to be clear, Obama didn't come out in support of gay marriage until 2012, 10 years ago. That was just a couple of years before Donald Trump you know, slid down that escalator. It took a long time. And a decade before that, Biden himself helped pass the Defense of Marriage Act in the Senate. 116 Democrats supported it in the House, nearly as many Republicans as opposed the codification of marriage equality did now. That is about as big of a shift 
on an issue of national import that I think that we've seen. I don't know what else. I don't know, Jessica, if you can come up with anything else, but that's about the biggest. Yeah, yeah, it's a big shift. And it's it's the product of a lot of protesting and a lot of rioting. Like people forget that Stonewall was a riot. This is something that people were fighting for in the streets for a very long time. And I think in the United States, we tend to, I don't know, turn our presidents into deities. Like Obama gave us, you know, you know, gay marriage became legal under the Obama administration. And so we make him the hero. But Joe Biden came out for gay marriage before him. And also all of those people that were in the streets, all of those people that were injured and lost their lives fighting for gay rights are the people who got us to this point. And so we can't really make make a deity of Barack Obama and be like, he got us these rights because that's really not what the history shows. And so again, to protect these rights, it's probably going to have to be the, the same thing. It's going to have to be people in the streets to protect those districts where we still have elected officials you know, governing on behalf of the far right who doesn't want us to enjoy our rights. And that is very scary. It's almost like uh, they say change should be a slow crawl, but instead it's it's a few steps forward and many steps back. And these days it kind of feels like Sisyphus rolling the big rock up the hill and then it rolls all the way back down mm-hmm. and then we have to start over again. Yeah. You can tell the different, I guess, education backgrounds of us. She made the Sisyphus reference and I was gonna reference Paula Abdul. But anyway, yes, it is in one form or another, two steps forward, one step back. Um, In any event, that was the House. We still need the Senate to actually pass it. Is that gonna happen? I don't know, more than 20 GOP senators declined to stake out positions on the issue when an Axios reporter asked them about it. Uh, Marco Rubio said he's a no, he called it a stupid waste of time, which is fun for his many, many LGBTQ plus constituents. That it's a stupid, your rights are a stupid waste of time. Not a stupid waste of time, so I guess we'll just do it and get it over with. A stupid waste of time that I will block at all costs. I will filibuster it for weeks, that's how much of a stupid waste of time it is to him. By the way, marriage equality polls at 68% in Florida. You know what that is for Marco Rubio? A liability. And so if you're Chuck Schumer, again, as we were talking about earlier in the show, why not make them filibuster this? Marriage equality nationally is at 71%. It is bad for a politician to stand against something so overwhelmingly positive. And it's not just him, by the way. Uh, David Dan tweeted out in Wisconsin, it's 73 to 26. Ron Johnson would vote no. Make him filibuster it. He's up for reelection. Do you want to defeat him or don't you? So whether you force the filibuster, to show how much you prioritize these rights and how you will defend these communities, do it for that reason. But if you can't do it for that reason, do it to take out Ron Johnson, do it to take out Marco Rubio. These are competitive races, uh, you know. And so whether it's you know wh- whichever it is, Dr. Oz, make him take a take a stand on this. Get out there and actually show people that these are issues you care about. Yeah, the fact that they care so much about gay marriage is honestly just creepy to me. As a member of the queer community, it's like, why would the party of freedom, the party that wants everyone to exercise their rights, and and especially the libertarians, it's usually people on the far right who have extreme views who are against gay marriage, the same people who talk about how important it is to have freedoms in our country. It is insane to me, this is the most intimate aspects of someone's life. And really at the end of the day, all it's about is these people don't look like me, they don't abide by the same traditions as me and therefore I reject their way of life. And I don't want them to be able to practice it in the same country as me because I value my privilege so much that I don't even wanna look at it. Yeah, 100%.